Welcome back, everybody. Sophronites time. Look at this. Ooh, let me get this moss off and then I'll show you. This moss is five months old. And looking like it's been there all the orchid's life. Quite disgusting. Now I've got two pieces. This is Sophronitis coccinia. Oh, the color of the blooms. Oh, get so distracted now that I talk about blooms. So there's two coccinias on here. And I normally remoss two times a year. Once before it starts to push out roots. And now, as we are going through the summer and heading into fall, I don't want to be disturbing the new growths as they come. The new roots on these two Sophronides that I have, this is Tianua, the new roots come out early spring, mid spring, something like that. So that is the time I, I, I moss, I remoss just before the new roots grow. But then, unfortunately, it's this time of year that I have to disturb them because as I'm anticipating new growths on these, I won't be getting any more new roots, but I can't leave it in this. I cannot. And um, there's going to be a lot of cleanup to do here because there's a lot of dead roots. These are the candidates that right now I will put back on the mount on fresh moss. But come spring next year, late winter, early spring next year, they are going on the ninja mounts. No doubt. My contemplation now is how radical do I go with taking off roots? Or do I want to keep it for anchoring so that I don't have to take up too much of the rhizome and stress that out? That is the two things I have. And oh, by the way, my goodness. Welcome, everybody. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me. As I was preparing my little kit here to film this, I was so focused on getting started because it's something I do not like doing. So I was really concentrating in my prep in order to just get through this as best as possible with as little stress to the orchid as possible. Because these roots are it for the rest of the year. Yes, I have growing tips, but there's no more new roots coming. Just going to wipe my hands, clean up my mount. It's going back on this mount. And if it hasn't grown much bigger by next year, then it'll go back on this mount, but with the white extractor fan hub filter on it. So my water with bleach, simply because I'm dealing with more than one orchid and it's gross. It's gross stuff. That moss. This is the first little piece. It, this piece hasn't bloomed for me yet. But also next spring, I'm going to take one piece and pot it up like I would my Rapiculus Lalias. And just grow it in ceramic, lava rock and sand. So this piece is going to be the candidate for that. Now I could go all ninja chopping off these roots, but I'm not going to. I need something a little bit more to stabilize the orchid. And there's not enough on here to cause any serious amount of concern. The bigger piece bloomed twice this year. I love it. I did have four growths this year on the big piece, but only two of them bloomed. And now you can see there's a new growth coming here. And I thought I saw another one, but I could be mistaken. 
There it is. There's another one coming out right there. And all these other roots in the front here are not good, but I am probably not going to cut them off. I need them. The color is perfect. These two now live in full shade as the sun rises in the summer, but the angle of the sun changes in the winter and then they are like six hours in the, in the sun, which is awesome. That's why they've got this anthocyanin here and that is quite all right. Now you see the anthocyanin is still here even though they have not seen a lick, a ray of sunshine for at least three months now. So where they live, I just leave them. The sun does its job for me. It's cooler for them in the summer and warmer for them in the winter, even though the outside temperature might only be 18 degrees, they do get about to 20, 22 based on their location in the sun. And at nighttime, their temperatures can go all the way down to five degrees Celsius. It's rare. Normally we drop to like nine, it's rare it goes lower than that, but you know, worst case scenario, that's what can happen. So this looks very rudimentary, but I don't make a big fuss about cleaning these organic mounts other than just a little bit of bleach and getting them a little bit off the, some of the algae off. But other than that, no need to go too radical on them. The important thing now is to get her back on, or both of them back on, and grow them on. Okay, so I just secured the first piece. Otherwise, you know, it might just get too repetitious and too long. But I'm going to do the second piece with you. And in the meantime, while I was doing one, I discovered something else. So let's have a look. This little piece has two new growths coming. One here and one there. So just as well. I was thinking, oh, never mind. It's only going to be maximum of eight months and then I change it again. But no, it does matter. I want those growths to come out nice and clean so that next spring they will give me roots. These little guys produce roots after all the flowering and everything is done. So no new roots for any of these growths. They can extend their current roots and we do have growing tips. But when it comes to new roots, there's none left for the rest of the year. So it looks like I'm being very liberal with my sphagnum moss and I am simply because it flattens out so quickly because when these guys are in active growth they need a lot of moisture and that makes the sphagnum moss go flat pretty pretty fast kind of collapses in upon itself So just a little, what looks like overkill to begin with. And in about a month, it'll all be flat again. Well, flatter. So just planning ahead a bit here. And around we go. I have used, I have done this with my needle before, needle and thread, but not this time. This is only until February, March of 2021.
there we go. Nice and firm. New moss. New growth. Let's grow. And we didn't damage the root in the back here. Perfect. Let's get this out of the way. And let's have a look at Senua. Another pretty, pretty, pretty one. Same procedure. I would like to get this one on uh, the hob filter mount, ninja mounts next year. The roots are used to sphagnum moss. So that's what they're going to get again for a couple of months. Let's clean this up and get it into the bleach water. I've had these for two and a half years now. And this spring was the best blooming for my Chernua ever. Cernua, Chernua. Best blooming ever. I think I had 13 blooms on this. Almost blocked out the entire plant. It's gorgeous. And they last so long. The coccinia lasts at least eight weeks, if not more than that. 10 weeks, easily, easily. And the color is just from both of these. My goodness. The time of year that they bloom. It's so welcoming. You know, you come out of winter. There's still some cold nights. In my case, I can't leave all my orchids out yet. So these are such a blessing because they can just live outside. I should maybe get more Sophronites in my life. So... This one, when I remounted it onto one of my white ones here, it was on wood. And I literally had to hack off the wood to get the cernua off. I was making a huge mess with pliers, etc. in the kitchen. And that's why she looks so funny. She's not a flat growing one because of how she grew on the wood. She looks like a little octopus. <laughs> something that's going to crawl away scuttle away but yeah this year 13 blooms they're not fragrant but my word what a show so pretty and they live next to each other so these are neighbors can't do something with one without having the other watching <laughs> I like to seeing all this root growth Looks really good. I would like a little bit more of a flatter growing habit, but I don't think I'm going to achieve that anytime soon. Simply because of what I mounted her on before. And the roots just dived in and she grew out over the top, so. I'm just going to take my time, remove as much of this old stuff as possible. Next year, I'm going to have to be much more radical with my removing of dirty, old, decayed matter. Next year, it's going to be like quite a radical cleanup. And then I can observe her better. I can observe both of them better when I put them on the other mounts. And by next year, I will have more experience with the other materials and mounts that we are currently looking into. If you haven't seen those videos, I will definitely put a link in the description or add a card. that you can go and have a look and see what I am talking about. I'm experimenting with materials and based on root size. And she would be a great candidate for the hob filter as opposed to the scouring pad because of the size and thickness of her roots. You know, they are all good. I have some dead root ends here. 
but that's about it. There's not, there's not much dead going on here. There's no new growth coming on here either. This is a weed trying to make itself at home. So this one's a bit behind to the coccinia. work on these two in pairs. That means I don't have to get confused as to what I'm doing. Hello, buddy. As to who goes when, where. That little row on that iron gate, that they all get worked on at the same time. I have one that I'm going to transfer onto my ninja mounts. I will be doing that after these, but these are desperate, desperate to come out. Yes, gross. Now, if I were to soak this in water, I could tease out more and more of the sphagnum moss. I'm not going to. I will next year, though. Next year, this will be like a two-day process. Every little bit of sphagnum moss is coming off. And in order to, to achieve that effectively, it's good to soak them in water and then shake off whatever debris comes loose and then soak again. And bit by bit, it comes off. And tweezers. We work with tweezers. I heard a crack. I may have just compromised this root. That's why I'm going to stop now. Look at how clean they come out. A little swish. And some bleach. <laughs> oh, I'm trying to find more of this placemats, but I can't find the same design or color. So look at this. Look at this. It's like a little sea urchin. <laughs> Ugh, they're so cute. Chubby chubbiness. But absolutely no sign of new growth. Not yet. Not that I can see. A gorgeous root system. And next year, all this is coming off. Like, all of it. Unless I start to damage roots like I think I just did, and then I'm gonna probably have a second heart and say, okay, no, I'm, I'm good, I'm good, let's get this mounted. <laughs> All right, let's get it mounted then. Better. A little bit of cleanup never hurt anybody. I am more meticulous around my orchids than anywhere else because living with animals is a total different animal. like a little kokodama. If I see a root that is sticking out and looks a little bit precarious for where I want my fishing line, I just add some moss over it. And she's now basically hanging upside down so you can see how tight she's on this mount. So I'm just going to tie her off. Okay, so this is not where they live. Let me pan you over very slowly. They live up there in the permanent shade. And in the winter, the angle of the sun hits that rack for at least six hours. It's perfect. 
So I just wanted to show you here that they are now all in their new shiny shoes. Hopefully going to grow on with some gorgeous growth that will give us bloom come early spring. Thank you everybody so much for watching. I really appreciate having you here. Questions, suggestions, any kind of comments whatsoever, please leave them down below and let's discuss. Have a wonderful day, everybody. Take care. Bye.